Dear friend, welcome back to the video series on everything you wanted to know about fully fashion knitting. In the last video, we discussed how to make a simple and small device to calibrate all systems of a machine and every machine to knit the same stitch quality on a production floor. In this video, we will discuss if waxing really helps to reduce the occurrence of mendings on a flatbed knitting machine. We normally come across mendings on a flatbed knitting machine because of a slub or because of a knot that is too big to pass through the previously formed knitted loop or because of a weak place in the yarn. The other reasons can be because of a drop stitch on the side of the knitted panel, because of the yarn feeder parked far too away from the knitted area, or because of a faulty needle, etc. etc. Whereas faults resulting from wrongly parked feeder can be taken care of by Adjusting the yarn feeder's distance parked outside the knitting area, the big knots, and the slub in the yarn, can be trapped by the correct setting of the big knot catcher on the yarn guide. And, the mendings because of the faulty needles, can be corrected by replacing the faulty needles. Even the mendings due to inadequate fabric takedown value, can be avoided by correcting the takedown value. But when it comes to the weak places on the yarn, or when we feel that the yarn is a bit hard to touch, or is brittle or weak in strength, we presume that waxing the yarn will help in reducing the number of occurrences of mendings in the knitted panel. We then take the yarn to the winding section. To rewind and wax it. Let's think rationally. The main reason why we wax the yarn is that we believe if we apply wax to the yarn, the wax will help in reducing the friction between yarns when a new loop is formed. When we pass the yarn under the wax on a winder, the top of the yarn will come in contact with the wax and the bottom part of the yarn will not come in contact with the yarn. This means about one third of the yarn circumference will be waxed. Whereas the rest two thirds of the yarn will not have any wax on this part of its surface. As the wax cannot be applied to the complete circumference of the yarn while waxing on a cone winder. Therefore, the chances of the area where the wax has been applied to the yarn of the previously formed loop coinciding with the area of waxed yarn of new loops are 1 in 6. The chances of waxed part of the yarn of the previously formed loop touching the waxed part of the yarn of the new loop are 17%. And the chances of the waxed part of the yarn of either the previous loop or the new loop touching the unwaxed part of the yarn of the other are not more than 50%. This too, if the one third of the yarn was waxed uniformly, which cannot be said with any surety. This concludes that the chances of waxed yarn coming into contact with the waxed yarn are about 17% and waxed yarn coming in contact with the unwaxed yarn are still around 50% only. We also believe the wax, so applied, will help pass the yarn smoothly during the knitting process. But this also happens only when the yarn passes through the previously formed loop to form a new loop. If we closely watch the process of formation of the new loop, we can observe that the yarn while forming the new loop 
touches past the same part of the previously formed loop. This means, whereas the yarn of the previous loop remains stationary, the area where the new loop yarn gets in touch with the previous loop also remains more or less the same. Let's observe how much yarn of the new loop will abrade with the previously formed loop. If the loop length is set at 7 mm, which is normally the case with 12 gauge knitting, the half the loop length will be 3.5 mm. We know that not all the loop length of the loop passes through the previous loop. In the illustration we can see that whereas the total length of the loop is measured between points A and B, the total length of the loop that actually passes through the previous loop is the distance between C and D. This is because the length between A and C and D and B form the legs of the loop. This length of the legs of the loop though can be calculated using geometrical formulas. But in our study, we can safely assume this length to be half a millimeter. If the total loop length is 7 millimeters, half of it becomes 3.5 millimeters, and if we remove the length of the legs of the loop, the total length that passes through the old or previously formed loop becomes 6 millimeters. And as this length abrades with the two halves of the previous loop, the total length that abrades the previous loop is not more than 3 millimeters. By now, we know that first, the chances that waxed part of the yarn of new loop will contact the other yarn, waxed or not waxed, are less than 50%. And second, that the yarn length that rubs with the previously formed loop is less than 3 millimeters. Now, let's find out the time the yarn of new loop comes in contact with the previously formed loop. The complete cycle of the loop formation starts from the time when the needle holding the previously formed loop starts moving up till the time it forms the loop and comes to rest again. The needle gets raised to a point when its latch clears the previously formed loop. The yarn is then fed to the hook of the needle by the yarn feeder. The downward movement of the needle starts. It first clears the formerly formed and held loop over its hook. It then pulls the new yarn through the bends of the previously formed loop to form a new loop and finally the needle raises to clear the verge bit of the needle bed during the cycle the yarn of the new loop comes in contact with the yarn of the previously formed loop only when the yarn is pulled through the previously formed loop while the carriage moves for a distance, as marked by the blue box in the illustration, this distance, though is less than 1 cm, we can assume it to be 1 cm for our calculations. If the carriage is moving at the speed of 1 m per second, it will take 100th one of a second to form the new loop which is 10 millisecond. Is it worth to wax the yarn, to facilitate the movement of the yarn that measures less than 3 mm during the new loop formation, with a probability of around 50%, or less that the waxed part will actually be contacted at all, and that too for a period of 10 milliseconds. If you ask me, I will certainly refrain from waxing the yarn. As in the process the chances of cone package density becoming higher or more. I would like to get the settings of the yarn guide, the feeder distance, the fabric take down right first, and 
then make a softer package. We'll discuss about how a softer package will reduce mendings in my next video. Wait for my next video on the role of package density in reducing the mending in flat bed knitting. For more detailed information, you may go through my book on fully fashioned sweater manufacturing. A Guide to Fully Fashion Sweater Manufacturing Published by Woodhead Publishing India Private Limited The book is available in leading bookstores in almost all countries around the world. It is also available on Amazon. If you have liked this video, please don't forget to click the like button. And, if you have found it this video useful, please share this video as much as you can with your friends and colleagues. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel. By subscribing the channel you will automatically get notification of the next uploaded videos. Thanks for watching.